are here with S South Portland City Manager Scott Morelli, and he is going to be telling us a little bit about the job of the city manager here in South Portland. So hello, Scott. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, our first question for you is, what is the role of a city manager? Well, good. it's a very good question, and it's one that people often uh, don't really understand because, you know, people generally don't interact with city managers too much. They usually think when, um, you know, someone thinks about a city, they think of the mayor or a city councilor. But really, the city manager's job is to run to help ensure that the day-to-day -day operations of the city um, get carried out. So that's making sure that we're offering uh, the best services that we can, whether it's uh, through our police department, fire department, uh, trash pickup, uh, issuing license for different businesses, making sure that businesses are complying with different rules and regulations. Um, and so really my job is just to kind of um, oversee all of those types of operations. And um, it's different from the city council. The city council, we have seven councilors in South Portland. They're elected um, by the voters. And, um, and then they select a mayor every year uh, who, who essentially runs the meetings of the city council each week. And their job is to enact uh, the laws of the city, which we call ordinances. And, uh, and then really it's my job, again, to make sure that, um, you know, the city staff are enforcing those uh, types of laws. And, and there's, there's all kinds of them. I usually show uh, when, we have, when we do this in person, there's a, there's a great big book of ordinances. And so people are amazed at how thick it is. It, it's grown over the past 50 years. So there's a lot of things in there to, to know. Well, and I'm sure as the city gets larger too, those types of things grow, the kind yeah. of requirements. That's right. Uh, all right, excellent. Uh, so our next question is, what is the role of the community members in making decisions for the city of South Portland? So community members um, play a very important role um, because they're ultimately the ones that get to decide who the city councilors are. Um, and they do that by going and voting every November. There are seven city councilors total and so you know in any given year there's um, two or three councilors that are up for election or re-election and um, anyone who lives in the city who's 18 years or older can run for one of those city council seats. So if, if people have ideas that they want to bring to the city one one way to um, help get those ideas enacted is to is to run for a city council seat and um, uh, but but voting for those counselors is really your way of saying, I, you know, I want this person to represent me when they make decisions about um, how the city, um, you know, should operate and what, what priorities the city should have. Now, not everyone wants to run for a city council spot and not everyone wants to show up to meetings every week to make decisions. Sometimes there's just one or two issues people might feel passionate about. So um, you, don't, you don't always have to run for an office to try to make a difference. There's other ways that you can help your community. One of them is serving on um, one of our various boards or committees. So, um, and we have all kinds of those uh, ranging from the planning board to the skate park committee to uh, our board of health. And uh, so that's another way. But again, if, if meetings or, or, or whatnot just aren't your thing, you don't have time for that, um, as a citizen, you also have a lot of power because, um, you know, simply reaching out to either city staff or your city councilors with an idea you have um, can actually be what starts uh, the ball rolling on getting a project done. And so the quick example I'll give is we had a group of students um, a couple years ago come to the city council with a petition that um, an online petition that a lot of people signed from our community and, and outside the community too saying that they wanted to have a skate park in South Portland uh, because really there was no safe place for them to go. And um, even though it's taken some time, we formed a committee. They started looking at um, potential sites for a skate park and they started looking at um, different design options for a skate park. And so um, as a result of those meetings, we now have a location which, um, which will be the, what's called the high school park which is uh, right by the high school and in between our high school and the community center. And so now they're in the process of uh, finalizing a design. And then in this year's budget process, we're going to be, uh, we're asking council to consider um, uh, issuing a uh, question to the voters, a bond question 
whereby voters in November would approve um, uh, a, a funding for a new skate park. So anyway, that happened because a, um, a couple of students who were interested in getting something started um, really wanted to uh, see something happen and, and they again they organized they they got a petition going they uh, contacted their city councilors and it takes a little bit of time nothing in government happens overnight generally but um, but something is going to happen as a result of this so there's a lot of a lot of good ways to get involved yeah that's very exciting for kids to hear that their voice is powerful and they can bring things that they're concerned about to the attention of our local government and they they can make a difference absolutely Excellent. So our next question is, how does the city take care of the community and the citizens? Well, that's a, that's a good question. There's a lot of ways that we, um, uh, you know, our, one of our biggest charges is to protect the health and safety of the public. And so um, we do that by operating a full-time police department. So, um, you know, that helps to not only respond when there's crimes happening, but just having police officers present in a community helps to deter crime from happening. So that's one service. Um, the other, of course, is our fire and um, EMS service. So when there are fires in the community, um, you know, we have a full-time fire department uh, that responds very quickly because we have three different stations um, across the city. And they also, uh, if you need an ambulance, um, they're the ones that also get the call and they'll show up on an ambulance and they, and they again, get there very quickly because we have different uh, locations. Um, another couple areas where we help, um, you know, protect the community is through our code enforcement office. And uh, people often don't think about code enforcement as protecting uh, community health, but um, you know, what, what code enforcement does is I talked earlier about that big book of rules and regulations. Well, a lot of those actually deal with public health and safety of like buildings and, um, you know, and types of businesses that can operate. And so if you had a business doing something that was um, unsafe next to your house, you know, maybe they were emitting too much smoke or maybe they were being too loud or their lights were too bright at night shining into your yard. Um, you know, we have an office that will go out and uh, talk to them and make sure that they uh, change whatever it is they're doing to help comply with the city's codes, um, you know, so that your health and well-being isn't uh, impacted. You know, there, there's other ways we do it too. We, you know, we have a health inspector. And so, you know, when you go to eat at restaurants, uh, you want to make sure that they're preparing food in a safe way. And, um, you know, they don't have, uh, you know, sometimes there's complaints about rodent infestation at different restaurants. And so a couple of years ago, we had to shut one down for a little while so they could clean up. So, you know, we want to make sure the public's eating um, healthy and clean food. And, uh, and so that's another kind of uh, example of how, of things that we do to help protect the, you know, health and safety of the community. Excellent. Um, and how do the parts of the city government work together? I heard you mention the police station, the firefighters, the, and the code enforcement. So how are all of those parts of government coming together to work together? We have, uh, we have department heads that uh, are, are kind of the, the supervisors uh, or the leaders of each of those departments. And so um, you know, their job not only is to make sure that their departments are, are running well and doing what they're supposed to do for the public, but um, that we also have um, weekly meetings where we talk about different things uh, that are, are going on with our departments and within the city. And sometimes we realize that um, there may be an issue that requires more than one um, department's involvement. You know, we, we may uh, go out on a fire call and um, see something happening in a house, uh, you know, that our code enforcement office might want to know about or, or something like that, you know, to, to, to help an individual out. So, um, so, you know, we have, like I said, we have these weekly meetings and, um, you know, and, and we have very good communication um, between our staff. And, uh, and uh, so we, we work, we're a good team. We work really well together. Excellent. And, and with all of our students in South Portland, we're constantly encouraging them to think about communication and collaboration. And it sounds like those are really important pieces that everybody in all levels of our local government are, are strong with. Um, and then our final question that we have for you is, how does the city government support local businesses? 
Um, so we have a kind of a brand new within the past two years Department of Economic Development. We have our first full-time economic development director and what his job is and, and um, working with our economic development committee, um, their job is to both support existing businesses in the community and also to attract um, good new ones to come into the community as well. And so we have a variety of uh, different ways that we help to support local businesses. Um, you, you know, and I'll, I'll use the, um, uh, this recent COVID-19 pandemic. One of the things that we started was a program um, where uh, when people go and, and do takeout or curbside pickup at one of our local restaurants, um, if they submit their receipt to us showing that they did go to and support a local business, they're entered into a weekly drawing to win a hundred dollar gift card to any business in South Portland of their choice. So kind of a little thing, but just to get people, uh, give them an incentive to continue uh, shopping and buying local. Um, and uh, so that's just one small example, but we, you know, we do offer different programs. Uh, you know, we have a revolving loan fund, which if a, if a business needs some money, for example, to help, uh, um, you know, them expand their operations or do something different. We have a fund where people can apply and, and, uh, and, and get money through the city. Um, and we also um, uh, hold a, an awards banquet every year where, um, you know, we'll, we'll uh, select uh, kind of like the business of the year or a new business of the year and things like that and give, give our businesses recognition. And it's a, it's a great event. People get awards. Um, uh, they get banners to display in their windows, and so it really kind of just promotes um, those businesses in South Portland who are doing a really good job in the community. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else that you want to add that you think our students would love to hear about um, how South Portland is doing right now through all of this? I, I think you covered a lot of the major topics. I'm sorry we couldn't do this in person this year. It's a lot of fun getting out to um, City Hall and seeing the council chambers where where they um, meet and uh, and conduct business and um, also um, getting to see the different vehicles that we use. We have some pretty cool equipment here at uh, City Hall and at our different buildings. So uh, sorry you can't see those in person, but um, I would just encourage any of you anytime you want uh, a tour of City Hall or the fire department or the police station. Um, once we get out of this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, um, maybe a little while, but once we get out of that, we're, we love to have visitors and show them everything that we do. And, um, it, you know, it's your government. This is your City Hall. And, uh, you know, even, even in second grade, um, we love to hear people's ideas and opinions because we don't have all the answers. The answers really come um, from, from everyone. And uh, the more heads you have um, in a decision-making process, the better the outcome. So any ideas you have, just please call us uh, and, or, or email us, whatever, whatever your preferred communication method is. Excellent. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, you too. Thanks.